and welcome to Reaction Shots for November 8th, 2022. That's when we're filming this, otherwise known as Election Day. I haven't looked at the results, so I guess I don't know how to feel right now. I've sort of lost hope in the entire damn system. Ha ha ha. We don't typically get into this sort of shit here at Easy Allies, and we probably kind of won't again here today. We're just talking about movies, baby. We don't want to get all bugaboo and crazy pants about anything. You got to give them hope. Give who hope? You got to give them hope. Who? Milk. Milk. With Sean Penn, one of the greats. I never saw it. It saw looked it sad. In, saw it in the Castro District. What up? Wow, shit. What up? Creator's intent. As a, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to kind of avoid a lot of LGBTQ movies because they... I just assume they'll end pretty sad. Yeah. I mean, it's a true story. I mean, so like, like uh, yeah, know. and I know how that one goes, yeah. so yeah, I kind of don't watch yeah. them sometimes. Yeah, I get that. But yeah, I can understand. That. I can try to understand that. Hey, welcome, massive score. Yeah, we've got the behind the scenes tier with us here live. Hello, and we've got questions from Patreon.com/slash/EasyAllies in the seven dollar and up tiers. If you want to get in on that for this discussions, I put up a prompt. For the, each episode, and then I, we just pull from that. Before we get into the topic of today's episode, which is political movies, very loosely, broadly, anything counts, whatever. Uh, have you, what have you been watching lately, baby boy? Last night, one of my favorite movies of all time. It had been a minute. Heat. Oh, fucking heat, heat, dude. Last night. when that guy picks up that girl, little girl, as like a body shield, oh, I'm like, I, man, you I are know. a bad dude. Yeah. Yeah. You're a bad dude. <laughs> it is truly one of the greatest movies ever made. And I feel like more so now than ever before in human history, Isla. Uh huh. Older movies have more value than they've ever had because mm. of the volume. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting all of my hate for modern oh. Hollywood on the volume. The 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 unreal stage. Yes, yes. Yeah. So like Old movies now, and, and like the heat, heat is from '95. Like yeah. it's it's old. You I know? mean, yeah, but just older by the day. Yeah, just shooting on location and practical effects. Like that's what people are hungry for. Mm -hmm. Um, well, like it, it's you think they're hungry for it, but like it really, I don't. How think, many people don't I, even realize or yeah, care? Yeah, I think right? most people don't care. Yeah, I mean, like I remember back to. Which, was it Rogue One? Yeah. Where they had uh, Grand Moff Tarkin or whatever his name is. Yeah. As a complete CG. And like everybody's yeah. parents and grandpas yeah. were like, wow. Yeah. Th how'd they get that guy? You know? Yeah. And it's just like, he was obviously CG, grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh boy. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. He is just an undeniable masterpiece. Yeah. That still holds up. And uh, he wrote a book that just came out. Oh, yeah, it's like a, a sequel. It's a prequel sequel, both. A pre-sequel. A pre-sequel. Like um, Borderlands. Yeah, I don't read it very often, but fuck, dude, I kind of want to read that. Like Audiobooks, baby. Yeah. That's what I do. Audible.com. Yeah. Because, you know, no spoilers if you haven't seen Heat, I won't say, but certain characters that could be, because it was in 1995, yeah, so yeah. like, how do, you, how do you follow that? How do you follow that up if it's 30 real world years later you yeah, know how are yeah, you gonna do yeah. the you, it's like you can't really so like i don't know if we'll ever get a sequel to heat it's probably just oh gonna in be, a movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i'm like he did it he yeah, wrote a yeah. book what are yeah, you talking I mean, about for a movie yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah you yeah, can't yeah, just yeah. you know get de niro and pacino and val Kilmer. Like, they're all really old and val you Kilmer's definitely hurt. should not try yeah irishman <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love Irishman. I never saw it. It was too long. But love it. The CG, pretty wild. Yeah. But yeah, tired of the volume. I mean, like to me, it's a very COVID-y vibe. Like all the Disney stuff that's on yeah. the volume and stuff. And like some of them, it looks great. Like Mandalorian season one, like they used it well. Mm -hmm. But some of the stuff, like Obi Wan, it was just like you can just see where the they stop pouring sand yeah. on the ground and then the volume takes over. Yeah. And it's just like, all right. And here's the thing though. Like when it's done on purpose, like I'd like to see someone use the volume and embrace the artifice yeah. of the volume. Like for example, uh, cabinet of curiosities or mm -hmm. the Cohen brother Macbeth, 
where like the set and like the the pl- stage play kind of like vibe was embraced. Yeah. yeah. I think that looks really cool. Totally. Or like Dogtown takes that to the like eight millionth degree. But like, I like that sort of thing when it's like on purpose. Yeah. So I, I, it'd be interesting to see people play with the volume and be like, it's the volume. Totally. You know, I like that perspective. Yeah, for sure. But yes, I, I appreciate Andor when it's just like, like Sophia and I were just talking about this where it was just like, wow, hey, they're outside. Yeah. Like, they're in a, they're on a outside. hill. <laughs> like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I missed this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, and he, then uh, I'm going to keep shouting because I really feel like there's everything is good, it feels like, in 2022 when it comes to TV and stuff. You know, how often does someone yell at you, oh, watch this, it's incredible. Like, yeah. it, it has no meaning anymore <laughs> because... Almost every day, someone on Twitter or in your actual life is like, yo, are you watching this? Are you watching this? Oh, did you watch that? And it's all incredible. Yeah. I promise you, with all of my heart and soul, <laughs> that interview with the vampire I need is to watch it. one I really of the watch it. absolute best shows of the year. What is it on? It's on AMC. It How do I get finished. AMC? Through Amazon or something? You can get AMC AMC Plus that on would, Amazon. That would it's let like me just eight watch bucks it? a month. You can just binge it, dude. Do it once. Okay. Just get it for a month. Okay. And just watch it. There's seven episodes. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's Sophia, my PSA we gotta on do that. It. It's my favorite. It's so good. It's so so good. Everything about it. I love it. I love the characters. I love the world. I love the the visual language of it. The best, the best. I don't know why I even hesitate about subscribing to a new thing because it's like yeah. I, got, it I got I got show. Well, I never Just do, do it though. Canceled. That's my point. It's like right I got Showtime. I got Showtime for Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and I've just been paying for Showtime. Yeah. You got to cancel when you sign up. I do it all the time with with things like this. I will legitimately sign up, and one minute later I will cancel, and it's like, are you sure you want to cancel? I'm like, yep, and it's like, all right, you're good until oh, because you paid one for the month. month. So yeah, then yeah. I don't even need to worry about That's it. That's pretty smart. Yeah. But with the Showtime, though, it's nice to keep around because once every, like, three or four months, I just pop in and watch the middle part of episode eight of Twin Peaks The Return, <laughs> where it's just, like, a 25-minute nuclear explosion <laughs> art film, and it's incredible. Uh, I'm not awesome. even kidding. I actually do this. Um it's great. But yes, that is a very good yeah. life life hack. Yes. Pro tip right there. That is what I do. That is that is what I do. <laughs> you won't get me no subscriptions. Because <laughs> I, I, I learned the hard I way. I subscribe to everything. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just infinitely subscribed to like six or seven different services. Yeah. Clean them up. Clean them up. Yeah. Where they get me is... Like Criterion Channel, right? Is like I'm jealous of that one. That's well, I mean, you can use my login, but oh, uh, Criterion good. Channel was like it's ninety nine dollars for the year. That's good. And so I'm like, okay, but it's like cheaper if you do the year. That's a good right? value. I feel like so yeah, right. Yeah. If I ever used it, but like <laughs> so I buy the year thinking like, okay, cool. If I watch like a couple movies a month, that'll be great. Yeah. And then like I just barely use it, oh. you know. So, but it's like I've bought the year, so it's like. There you go. Yeah, lock you in. I want to have... Here's what I want to start doing, Hubie. You're invited. Okay. I want to start having, like, fancy movie night yeah. at my new place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm down. It's going to be dope. Fancy movie night. What would the first movie be? For I know f- what the first movie is. Oh, okay. Do you, you want to spoil do you, it Do you want to no? know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll spoil the How shit How would you kick that off? I'm going to... All right. Like, Great Gatsby or something? No, 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 that's no, no, too. No. That's too... What's no. the I'm looking for? That's too basic. Too basic. Yeah. Because uh, I want to curate things that I like or that I've always wanted to see. Uh, maybe loosely themed on things going on, but the first movie, Steven Soderbergh's Kafka. Kafka. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's seen it. Yeah. And it's great. John Malkovich, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Uh, no. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. And Ian Holm is in it. If Kafka. I recall, it's been a minute. <laughs> Kafka's great. Kafka. And nobody's seen it. You Never can't it. get yeah. it. Yeah. You can't get it in America. Wow. Like So how do you get it? I you either torrent torrent or it or like uh Depress. import it. Like I imported a Spanish Blu-ray of Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Awesome. Um Yeah. Kafka's great. And the theme song 
rips. It's so good. It's called Eddie's <laughs> Dead, and it's so good. I'm pretty sure it's a symbolom. It sounds like a hammer dulcimer, but it's deeper. Symbolom? What is that? It's like a hammer dulcimer, okay, but okay. deeper. Got it. Perhaps <laughs> from. I'm not sure the country of origin of a symbolom, actually. India or China, perhaps? Don't yeah. know. If you know, tell me. Awesome. Um, but I love it. One time I was at the Museum of Jurassic Technology for their holiday party, and they had a Symbolom guy. And he was just in this room playing Symbolom. And it was the greatest thing that's ever... I just stood there listening to Symbolom for like two hours. Yeah. And then a dude with an accordion just kind of materialized. And I was like, <laughs> this is the greatest thing. I love the Museum of Jurassic Technology. Yeah. Anyways, that'd be the first one. Um, I, I think you should watch Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I need to. Yeah, yeah. It was too flashy for Sophia. Got it. Um, it's very flashy. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of flashes. But I want to watch it. Yeah. I, I want to watch it. Yeah. Why is there a symbol on in it? No, I finished it and it was, it was just moving. You know, okay. it's really good. I want to watch it. I've heard it's incredible. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And are we gonna talk about Cabinet? Did you watch it? I've seen two episodes of Cabinet. Oh, you didn't really like them. I want to watch. Gosford Park. Also, I've never seen that. Gosford Park. A bunch of articles are coming up, like twenty top twenty five whodunits, and I love whodunits. Gosford. That is a name I have not heard in a long, <laughs> long time. time. <laughs> I didn't realize it was uh, Robert Altman, right? Who directed it? So. Whatever. Gosford Park. Yeah. I love whodunits, and I've never seen that one. Heck yeah. Anyway, um, Cabinet. I want to keep going on Cabinet. Yeah. But like, it's so funny, dude. And like this will upset you perhaps. Okay. I was talking about Sophia with this with Sophia. See how they run? Okay. Um but like I love Guillermo so much. Yeah. As a dude. Yeah. He seems like the sweetest man yeah. and I always love like a pl- a double triple S tier ideas man. Oh, ideas and visuals. And visuals. Nobody better. But like his movies always like nuts and bolts. Almost they they like almost get there and then they like miss the mark for me. Nuts and bolts. Huh? His his screenplays are not the best. Right. He's not the best writer. Yeah. He's not the best writer. And that is like also, as harsh as it is for me to say, I will say that. Yeah. And they also kind of tend to like have pacing issues or like a weird third act or like just be brutally punishingly mean to the audience like Pan's Labyrinth. And it's just like, I I just want him to, I don't know. So cabinet for me is like, mm. like each one, I've only seen two. I've seen the first one and then the Rupert Grint one yeah. with like the witch. He only co-writes two of them. Right. The first and the last. But like the show to me, of uh, just judging on those two, has weird ass pacing where it's like, I want the episodes to be 70 to 90 minutes instead of 60. Cause it's like, they start really well paced and then just like with 20 minutes left, they're like, oh shit. And they just like go into crazy those overdrive. Ones, those ones. Yeah. Those two do that for yeah. sure. Uh, I hear the other ones don't. I, I don't know. I love them all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I really liked the vibes them. of them a lot and I loved that it embraced kind of like a more theatrical, like, yeah. Like, you can tell, like, a gobo light is being used to do this shadow, and I kind of love that. Like, this forest set is, like, clearly just, like, yeah. on a soundstage, and I kind of... It's so nice. Yeah. And he curated them, so, like, one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight are, like, paired. Okay. They're all paired. They're all, like... Okay. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. One of like... What's, you know. Which one's your favorite? If, if you can say All right, I'll finally say it. Everyone's been asking me this. Oh, okay. I didn't Everyone's realize. Everyone's been asking me this. Even on, on, I did a syndrome on it today, not only on it, but I was like, I'm not going to say it, but reaction shots, I'll say it, because reaction shots is the best. Reaction shots. Um, The Autopsy. Okay. With F. Marie Abraham. Ooh. I think it's number three. Okay. The Autopsy. Okay. Is, and the one from the director of Mandy, I think you'd oh. be obsessed with. Panos Cosmo. Yes. I can't yeah. remember his name. So number exactly. three, and I think it's number seven. Okay. Maybe maybe go there. Try okay. those. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, but I think you'd really like number five. I think with Ben Barnes, the Pickford model, and has Crispin Glover. Oh, I've heard that one's crazy too. And I just gotta it's watch Cthulhu, more. Cthulhu. Like, oh shit. All it's, right. It's Lovecraft or whatever. Yeah, it's a Lovecraft yeah, yeah. story. So is the witch one. And that one too. Yeah. I just say Cthulhu for Lovecraft. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, yeah. So. Yeah. So it's weird and vaguely racist, is what you're saying. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, Lovecraft. Yeah. Not a chill dude. Yeah. Came up with some fun ideas, but my yeah. God, what a bastard. I, anyway. I love I love them all. I, I love Guillermo movies. I like love even, Guillermo. Even you yeah. saying about just like, 
you know, his movies kind of, they fall off. Like the only ones I've felt fell off were Crimson Peak and Nightmare Alley, but Crimson Nightmare Alley was yeah. But Crimson Peak, when I rewatched it, I need to rewatch is it. Incredible. So yeah. I need to rewatch Nightmare Alley, and it's, it's maybe like yo, my expectations are always like that's the thing with him is like he, he's like hey look over here and then yeah. he just he comes comes here. All His I movies think, are always not what you expect. Well, and I think I think also the advertisers or the trailer editor yeah. houses or like the studios always they do him dirty him. because he's always. always out there saying like no uh yeah. crimson peak is a, is a gothic romance it's not a horror movie and then yeah. the, the trailer's like they, they ghosts, try to put him in a box they try and then, to put like, him in the box like pan's labyrinth like the trailers were all fantasy stuff yeah. and then you get there and it's like 10 percent fantasy 95 yeah. percent really nasty war movie, war movie. yeah i know that's 105 percent yeah um and so it's like every single one of his movies is just advertised wrong. And yeah. so you go in thinking it's a whole other thing. Totally agree. We just need to listen to poor baby Guillermo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he's always telling us. Yeah. <laughs> yep. How about you? What have you been watching? Oh, uh, Andor. Andor. <laughs> um, I finally, I didn't, I didn't want to. I'm so burned out on Star Wars. I feel like Rise of Skywalker burned me so hard. Like, I was a super fan of Star Wars, as I've said before, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I had the magazines my entire life. Like, I've been, I've been obsessed with Star Wars yeah. my whole life. And that new trilogy was just so garbage that I, it burned me shit out. Growing dude. up, how many Star Wars collectibles? Oh, yeah. So many, so many. Cards or toys or whatever. Saw the prequels the hell. in the theaters multiple times. Like, yeah. even though I was like, these might not be very good. Um, yeah, thrilled, you know? Yeah. Uh, Andor's brought me back. Like, I like. Andor so much so much it's what i want out of star wars it's like it's like boots on the ground yep. characters bonds stakes yeah it's made the empire and it has a huge like s- scope yeah. like i thought it would be just like okay here's this dude but it's like we're following this dude and we're getting also the whole political scene yeah. i mean like it's perfect yeah. for this episode yeah and is the most political, political drama. Fucking star wars thing that's happened maybe since the originals seriously it's made me f- feel threatened by the empire so much the most since since the original trilogy also like, even though one two and three are all about that right you know but still right. Andor has made them more threatening more menacing yeah than all that well and like it's getting back to what star wars like was about yeah. Like obviously the clip was making the rounds of him and James Cameron talking, talking about yeah, it and yeah. him talking about how like it's about guerrilla warfare and how like anti-American star Wars was and yeah. how it was like anti-capitalist a- anti-Vietnam, you mm-hmm. know, anti all that. And like the good guys are using guerrilla warfare, you know, and like they are in that, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just like, it's so cool. And also it's shockingly and unabashedly, anti-police yeah and or police state yeah it is like commentating on it's comment it's like yeah. directly speaking yeah. about it yeah and like to the point where sophia and i were kind of just like how did disney like did they just not read the scripts <laughs> when they said yes to this yeah because it's like disney's like I big know. daddy fucking yeah. it feels Mickey like Mouse. they tricked disney into yeah, making it feels like they tricked stuff. disney into making something thoughtful and interesting <laughs> yeah. yeah it's shocking it, it is I, I, I literally, I, I, I threw up two middle fingers. It's like, I don't give a fuck and or everything after Lucas. Like, all of it. Yeah. I, 789, Mandalorian, I like it more than, sorry. I am like, liking it more than Mandalorian too. Like, I really, really Andor. loved Mandalorian season one. Mandalorian season two, I liked until the end when they made it tie into other stuff in a stupid way. And then Boba Fett kind of just had to like retcon that back out and Boba Fett is like otherwise a pretty bad show in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, that was a disappointment. And or like literally I'm not kidding. Like I'm not kidding. Since Disney took over I'm not kidding. It's the best. Since Mandalorian then. and Andor are like yeah. the only Star Wars I've liked. And I love Last Jedi. But every, I like the Last Jedi too. I liked I that. Us, I liked that in the moment, but yeah. it's been destroyed by been the destroyed. rise of Skywalker. Yeah. And like a third of the Last Jedi I always forget about and the it's casino just not, part is it's just not terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas yeah. Andor has been like killing yeah. it week yeah. in, week out. I'm two episodes behind on Andor, yeah. and I'm very. Um, perhaps Sophia and I will like catch up tonight. Yeah, but like Maybe three. Back my goodness, look out. Yeah, I don't know if we'll have the stamina to get to <laughs> all three tonight. But like, I think Brad has seen the first like three. Yeah, or two, and he's three, like, yeah. 
iffy on it still. Yeah. <gasps> but like, oh man, it's good. It's so good. It's real good. Yep. I also bought the folk horror box set. Um, so we watched Allison's birthday back for Halloween, and there are a few more in there I really want to watch. Never seen that one. Um, it was okay. Uh, I think it's probably not the best on the box set, but who knows. Um, what else have I been watching? I feel like I watched some other stuff lately. I watched a couple of House of Dragons. didn't really grab me. I really liked Rings of Power. Um, yeah, I don't know. First two House of Dragons just didn't do it for me. Damn. It was just too much like... Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. And I'm sure. just like, I get it. I've I seen this. I don't care. Like, I, I don't it. know. Maybe I didn't give it enough chance. I don't know. Maybe like three hours isn't enough for things. Well, because I was in your boat as well. I was burned by Game of Thrones and going in, I was guarded. Yeah. But for me, within the first like 20, 30 minutes, I was just like, wow, I'm I'm really into this. Mm. So maybe yeah. you're just I not. Into I mean, the right. I like Matt Smith. I think yeah. all the performances have been really good. It's just. It's all about timing, you know? Yeah. Maybe if you watched it a year from now, you'd be like, oh, it's really good. But also, just like, right now, people started. Par- I got parasited on it too because everyone was like, it's so good. It's so That's good. It's I'm actually good. That's what freaks me out. With Andor, yeah, I, I Andor sucks. Yeah, I'm watch it. Worried. <laughs> I'm so worried because everyone watching Andor is like on the same page of like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the best. Yeah. So now people coming in have the parasite expectation. Right, right, right. And when you hear someone saying it's the only good Star Wars, you're yeah. gonna, <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> totally in the last you know ten years or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like if there were other things I watched, I'm not remembering them right now. Yeah, just cyberpunk and. House of the Dragon and Lord yeah. Rings for me. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Still trying to catch up on Midnight Club. I put it on the back burner. Dude, I couldn't. I know. I, I wa- know. Well, uh-huh. I don't know if I told this on Reactor Chats, but I, I put it on because I love Flanagan. Flanagan. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And Sophia was like, do you know what this is about? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I don't know anything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, kn- I knew that you told me it broke a record for most jump scares. And I was like, okay, yeah. I'm prepared for that. Yeah. I, you know, whatever. Uh, and then... You know, she's like, are you sure you want to watch this? And then, yeah. like, the little girl gets cancer, and I'm yeah. like, oh. And she's like, yeah, every episode is a kid who has a terminal illness. Yeah. And I'm like, we're turning this off. Yeah, like, I can't. Up. I cannot. People keep saying I should watch The Bear. The Bear is You've a You've been watching The, the Bear. The Bear is a 10. I ended a while ago now, but yeah, oh, it's okay. a 10, 10. It sounds like really intense needlessly. Like, I'm like, why the would bear? why would this scenario be that stressful? I guess I don't... Maybe it wasn't pitched to me properly. Dramedy, for sure. Oh, okay, so it's, it's a, a little, dramedy. It's a dramedy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, I would say that, that kind of makes it... 40 That makes, like, it more, it's, makes yeah, more sense. It's a dramedy. Mm. They're just doing construction downstairs. Crazy down there. Brr. Yeah. Um, man, yeah, but I'm so excited for some stuff coming up. Like, I really want to see the new Benson and Moorhead, like something in the dirt. I want to see, I'm seeing Wakanda forever on Saturday or whatever. Yeah. Um, look at really, really looking forward to knives out to glass onion, whatever. Sure, sure. I just, I love knives out so much. Yeah. Like I love who done it. I love who done it. Who done it. Oh man. Um, I really want to see decision to leave. I really want to see decision to leave. It's playing at like one show time a day. For it's playing at Elmo a bunch. Yeah. Uh, I want to see Tar. Really want to see however Tar. However you say that. I don't... Yeah. The A with the accent. The accent I don't throws know me off. what language that is. Tar. But, uh, yeah. Something. Tor. Yeah. I don't know. In Norwegian, they don't have that, so I don't know how to say mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah. I uh, really want to see that. Yeah, I've got a, like a huge list of movies that I'm like back on right yeah. now that I need to do. Uh, I really want to rewatch Michael Clayton. Fuck, we're, yeah. we keep talking about Michael Clayton. I was Clayton. going to watch it last night <laughs> for this episode again because yeah. I love Michael Clayton. It's been years ten since I've seen ten. it. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it so much it's at the time. So I know. But I had to do... Um, maybe I'll try to watch that tonight. Hey, wait. I need a cozy wait thing. Wait a sec. What? Is this a crazy connection? What? Didn't Gilroy do Michael Clayton? Gilroy? Is it Tony Gilroy, dude? Andor! Andor is Tony Gilroy! Yes! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Oh! Dude! The connection! And did he write Rogue One? Yeah. Rogue One had like a yep. troubled he development, He did Rogue One. Right? He wrote Rogue One. Yep. Is that Damn. crazy? Yeah. Tony Gilroy. Tony Gilroy, dude. Created Andor. Wrote Rogue One. Andor, dude, like... Wrote Michael Clayton. I love Michael Clayton. Wrote the Bourne movies. Fuck, I love Bourne. 
Those count as political. Wrote Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon, dude. The Devil's Advocate. Dolores Claiborne. Shout out. Is that a movie? Yeah. I've never seen that one. Oh my God. With, Devil's Advocate uh, is hilarious. With uh, Kathy Bates. My grandma loved this Whoa. movie. A big city reporter travels to a small town where her mother has been arrested for the murder of an elderly woman for whom she worked as a housekeeper. Who done it? Who done it? (laughs) That reminds me, have you ever seen Reversal of Fortune? No. Jeremy Irons won an Oscar for this one, Academy Award for acting, um, where he's accused- I love going back to- movies where the they won the oscar yeah. for acting yeah 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 love that. he's accused of killing his wife with insulin whoa and he's like, like this slowly like over well the overdosing of, her with insulin because she's a diabetic crap and uh but like the way he does it was like or the way he plays it yeah because he's like this untouchable millionaire recluse and then he so he just hires this lawyer and his like team of law school students to defend him this movie sounds really good but like he's so weird yeah like he's like making jokes about about it and no one can tell if he did it or not is is it a courtroom drama as well kind of yeah it's amazing you would love it dude reversal of fortune you would love that movie it's fucking so good (laughs) i want to watch that one oh man i can't remember who plays the lawyer if it's like albert brooks or somebody but like that feels wrong, but I don't know who... I can't remember who played the lawyer, but okay. he's really good in it, too. Yeah. It's great. Uh, Reversal of Fortune. Sick. Sidney Pollack is the lawyer. Just Sid- a guess. Oh, maybe. Just a guess. Sounds like it, it'd be a Sidney Pollack. Yeah, role. it might be, actually. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to remember who directed it, because now you put Sidney Lumet in my head, but I'm like, that <laughs> doesn't seem right. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Politics. Uh, again, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. We're talking about movies. We're talking about movies. We're talking about the Manchurian candidate. We're talking about the candidates. Manchurian candidate. We're talking about fun movies. We're talking about Michael Clayton. <laughs> We're talking about Spotlight. Yeah. We're talking about... Yo, Spotlight's heavy as shit. Spotlight is heavy as shit. Heavy That's as That's not really frick. fun, but it's a movie. Goodness. Ow, I hit my tooth on the mic thing. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, just... Don't, yeah. you know, whatever. Yo, <laughs> leave it in the drafts. <laughs> leave it in the drafts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> Michael Huber and I have our own politics. Yeah. Whatever. Very similar. I, I think we're other, probably right? on the same page yeah. about just about everything. Yeah, just uh, about You may not be. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Anyways. Uh, I, I preface that because I will be reading comments from patrons that I have not pre-screened. We have not vetted. We have not vetted these. Okay. So uh, it's been a long <laughs> life and I haven't vetted these comments. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really wading into the, gra- the, the, the long grass. Jurassic Stand Park. the long grass. Lost World Jurassic Park style Stand here. Stand into the long grass. Don't cut the long grass. That's so good. Pete Postlethwaite, dude. <laughs> Rip, dude. Yeah. Rip. Oh, man. Romeo plus Juliet. Great political movie. Obviously, Romeo and Juliet, political, but like... Political? Is it? Yeah, they're I... two, two houses, both alike in dignity. In Fair Verona, where oh, they mean, are seen. I mean, I feel like you can make anything political. I mean, yeah. I think we'll find in this episode that, yeah. like, whatever, I'll count anything. Yeah. But it's, like, they're, like, corporate, like, mega, you know, yeah. corporations in that version of it. Sure. You know? Sure, sure. Anyway. Good movie. Uh, yeah. Uh, but Pete Postlethwaite plays the monk in that. That's why I nice. suddenly started talking about that movie. Steven Spielberg said he's the best actor he's, like, ever worked with of all time. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they worked together in a few, didn't they? I forget. I think. Anyway, yeah, I really liked his stuff. Anyhow, David Warren says, these are our patrons in the film tier, by the way, patreon.com. David Warren, I used to watch Kinsey a lot. Is that political? Sex, queerness, et cetera, is often politicized anyway, so it feels like it, even if it, it's not about a bunch of politicians, excuse me, kind of feels like American politics especially is already dramatic enough these days that we don't really need movies anymore. Milk, though. Yeah. Milk. Gotta give him hope. Gotta give him hope. Gotta give him hope. 
Uh, Carl Williams agrees that because American politics have gotten so absurd that we maybe don't need political movies as much anymore. Yeah. It's interesting because it's like, I haven't seen it yet, but Till, um, heard that's great. The movie about Emmett Till, uh, is, is out or is coming out. out. Yeah. It's out right now. And it's like, you know, the story of that is very intense. Yeah. Um, like the mom deciding like her kid was brutalized horribly and then she just let, they didn't treat the body, basically, an open casket just to, like, send a message, you know? Yeah. And it's, like, very intense. Yeah. I Like, that movie almost sounds too intense. Yeah. But it's a huge, important story, too, you know? Yeah. I think those are the kinds of stories that we need more now than, like, you know, yeah. Lady Killers or, like... Trial of the Chicago 7 type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Spotlight. Like, docu, docu. Yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff seems to be more in vogue now than Manchurian Candidate or like political thrillers. Totally. I think we're maybe beyond political thrillers. Yeah, it's it's dramas now. Yeah. Because the stories are so out of control. Right. Real life is crazier. What the heck? (laughs) Yeah. Like, oh yeah, like so many true political stories, they just make me sad. Yeah. You know, unless they're like some sick inspirational ones. Yeah. But usually I just end up being It's too much for sad me. It's like too much. Or disgusted. Yeah. Or it's d- a disillusioned. Lot. Yeah. yeah. Got to give him hope. You got to give him hope. I love milk. It's funny because like now now talking about this, I start thinking about the French Dispatch. The the Wes Anderson, did you see that one? I did. Yeah. Wait. Did you? The newest one. No, I did not. Um but that one has All of his movies look and feel the same. <laughs> kind at a glance, of, kind at, a glance. at a glance if, if, if i'm if i'm like shuffling through them in my brain <laughs> i'm just like ah i guess it's i mean it's like anybody like once you're familiar with yeah, his yeah. oeuvre you He's can like separate stop. them and they're all very different yeah, from yeah, each yeah. other but very the same yeah, yes yeah. um it's like coen brothers or, Tarantino, or yeah tony yeah. scott like they're anyway, different, but they're similar de palma sure. it's sure, like sure. okay yeah they're yeah. different but they're similar <laughs> um but french dispatch is a very political movie and uh, I I loved it. It yes. had like very cool moments of engaging with it. And Jeffrey Wright's performance loved is it. so he's basically doing James Baldwin. It's so good. Oh. Anyway, um, um, so, yeah. Edwin Jones. I hope these count as political. But the more Fuck recent yeah. Manchurian Candidate with Denzel. Love Hell yeah, that counts. I, I love. I love that the movie. clandestine sleeper agent type thrillers. Also along those lines, No Way Out with Kevin Costner. I haven't seen that. No Way Out. It's like uh. Oh, I'm thinking of. Is that with Diane Lane? There's the Kiefer or the Where Donald the kid Sutherland is, one. Like in the cult, they have to like rescue the kid. I don't know. I don't know. Forget me. Manchurian Candidate, though. Yeah, love I've heard it. the original is very boring. I love the original, really? dude. Little Frank Sinatra in there. It's that was so back good. in the day, like. I, I love the Mr. Sunday movies episode it. about the original Ocean's Eleven with Frank mm-hmm. Sinatra and all those guys because they just like hate the shit out of it. They yeah. think it's so boring. But there's something like cozy about those old movies. I think too. my dad single handedly has like the dad power. Yeah, it, like it I just, love the movie Oblivion just because I watched it with my yeah. dad in theaters. You know? And it's not even watching a specific movie with my dad. It's embracing the time period. So like I'm yeah. never I never find that stuff boring. I yeah. find it like a window into the past. Like that's one of the reasons I love movies so much. Like that's something games don't have yet. Yeah. It's like, yo, I can see the world in the sixties, you know, even if it's like I sets and stuff. Show you the world. Like I love just, I guess you could play like, like old Atari travel. stuff or whatever. And like, yeah, like see in that tech. upcoming uh, collection or whatever, but, but like seeing a place in the, yeah, you know, yeah. Filming yeah, a yeah. place yeah, in the sixties yeah, yeah. or fifties or forties, you know, and just, I love it. Yeah. True. Uh, Sam Sorensen. As a teenager, I remember seeing both Bullworth and Wag the Dog. I haven't seen Bullworth in so long. Yeah. Wag the Dog was good, too. Um, as an adult, I think I really need to go back and watch them again. Absolutely. If just to understand more of the humor and nuance, I'm sure I missed out on on the first, in the first viewing. Sorry. I'm like, my tummy's feeling weird. Uh, my only fear is that they hold up or will feel naive, um is if they hold up or will they feel naive or outdated more likely though, I'll rewatch the distinguished gentleman or Dave, because I think I remember them being more lighthearted and yes, Michael Clayton or any other movie about power structures that affect our political environment are fair game. 
A story about someone who can influence the government is just as much a political thriller as one about the government directly. Great Thank you for out. smoking also comes to mind, and I highly recommend it. Eckhart is a treasure. Great call out. That movie's incredible. Eckhart was having like a real wild, like little like renaissance right during that yeah, period Dark too. Dark Knight. Dark Knight, that one. In the Company of Men was pretty wild. Nice. Yeah, I wonder um, what Aaron Eckhart's up to. Yeah, what are you up to, Aaron Eckhart? Yeah. It's big time for a second. Uh, Max Miller says, Navalny, Navalny is a must-watch documentary about Putin's opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. He has a wild story, and the director of the doc was right there with him through a lot of the big stuff. The film plays more like a spy thriller than a documentary. Really fascinating. I knew nothing about the story before watching, but this really grabbed me. It's now playing on HBO Max in America, at least. Wow. And Jason Wozner asked if the movie brings up his far right views hmm. or his fairly loose tongue and hmm. thumbs when it's it comes to racial figure. slurs. Yeah, com- com- yes, particularly against Ukrainians. Ukrainians. They do bring it up a little bit. They bring it up a little bit, but it's definitely not the focus, huh? Don't know anything about any of that. The last, I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's kind of political. Was uh, Icarus was the Russian oh. doping documentary yeah. with the Olympics? That's in, in, that's like a spy thriller. It's incredible. Yeah. Them drilling holes in the wall, putting samples through. Jeez. It's nuts. Really good documentary. One of the best. It won the Oscar. Yeah. 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 You got I think me thinking it's on about, Netflix or something. Easy to stream that one. Got me thinking about uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. That's I, a re- good one. I really like that one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I only watched it once, but. Same, same. Um, Carl Williams for me I would say my absolute top three favorite political movies would be Doctor Strange Lover How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb Hell Yes Venturian Kennedy Original and Being There favorite political TV shows obviously 24 (laughs) 24. dude Doctor Strange Love is so so good fucking 10 out of 10 it's it's so funny yeah and so prescient and also just terrifying. Terrifying. And I know I sing its praises all the time, but it came out like a year, within a year of that too. I think it was like a year before, but fail safe. Mm. You got to watch fail safe Huber. Okay. It's so good. It's basically yeah. the serious version of Dr. Strangelove. I love that. It is so intense. Oh, like, so intense. I want to say I'd like takes it place, more than Kubrick, but you I like that idea. Shit. It takes place mostly in like one room. Nice. In a bunker underground. Nice. It's nuts. Fail safe, dude. It's really good. <laughs> really good script. Um, yeah. Uh, Jason Warshner, what's your favorite political movie or show? I really don't have anything more to add. Uh, I haven't seen Billy Jack Goes to Washington in forever, so I can put my two cents on if the movie holds up. You guys love Billy Jack, and we have failed you by not listening to it or watching it yet. Um on the anything else you'd like to talk about question, Jason Wojnar says, on my flight home from Poland after visiting Ukraine, I sat next to a Finnish woman who was flying to America for the first time. In her home country, she owns movie theaters and also works out distribution deals. It was a fascinating nine hours as I asked as many questions about the business as possible, and we talked about films. Apparently, Finland has a pretty thriving film business that's fairly self-sustaining, meaning Finns like Finnish movies. Cool. They're just making movies and watching them themselves. Cool. Very cool. I guess that's what America does, too. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Um, that sounds like a nice conversation, just like yeah. sitting next to somebody on a plane. Dude, I was sitting next to this lady on a plane, and I happened to glance at her laptop, and she was writing an obituary for her father. Fuck. And I was just like, oh, bummer. That's the first thing they teach you how to write in journalism school. Really? Yep. Or she First wasn't reading thing. the obituary, sorry. She was reading writing a eulogy, Shit. which is weird because is we didn't do eulogies for my parents. Nobody spoke like that. We had the, the pastor did yeah. a sermon. We did one for my grandma. It seems like a, I don't know. My grandma was like hyper religious, like <sighs> deep. Right, but like deep. making someone who knew the person like get up there and speak seems cruel. I don't know. Yeah. We didn't do it, but yeah. whatever. Um... Alexander Zirinov, Huber, I've missed your impressions for Cyberpunk Edge Runners, or are you still watching it? Oh, have I missed? Sorry. Finished it. It's on the newest syndrome, but I don't take a deep dive. I will give you some takes. It's got a really nice arc. 
Okay. It, the story is such a nice arc. It's 10 episodes. The episodes are 25 minutes a pop. It's one of those shows where I watch all of it, intro, show, credits, yeah. like one at a time. I, I felt like one episode at a time was the way to do it. I mean, a lot of people like binging anime. Yeah. But for me, each episode was so rich and like full that I, that I would watch one at a time and I'd be great. And I just, I, I love those characters to death. Like, it, it really, I knew I would like it because Cyberpunk is, is, the world is so awesome. Yeah. I knew I would like it, but I did not expect to be as emotionally invested as I was. I was so invested. It is one of the best shows of the year. Wow. I'm not kidding okay. around. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Also, it's one of those animes Baby's first anime yeah. where I could recommend it to anyone. Sure. If you don't like cyberpunk or if you don't like anime, I would still recommend this to people. Cool. Yeah. So. You've made me remember the other thing I've been watching and loving is the peripheral. Nice. I love the peripheral. Is it cyberpunk? Yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, kind of. Okay. It's. Do you jack into the matrix? I see her wearing a headset. Yeah, now. basically. Yeah, she. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I can't. Okay. Okay. I don't really want to say what she's jacking into, but yeah. it's, it's cool. Okay. Um, it's on Apple TV? No, it's on Amazon. Oh, Prime. easy watch, baby. You will like it, I think. Okay, I'm going to do it. Like, it's, I loved the book. I want to know, the, the, this is going to dictate a lot. Who I can't tell what. Directed. Vincenzo Natale directed the first two. The pilot episode. The first the- two! Cube, Splice. I told you this. You did tell me this. God. That's such a sell. Dude, I told you this. Yeah, you did tell me this. That gets me so hyped. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good. (laughs) I can't tell if it's a good show. I love the book so much. And like the film or the show is doing really interesting stuff with it. It's shifting things around and like the reveals and stuff. Nice. And it's doing them in an interesting way. So it's fun to watch it knowing what's going on. Nice. But I think that the show would probably be really exciting for people who don't know what's going on because it kind of like drip feeds you some stuff. Nice. Uh, But yeah. The the peripheral is good so nice. far, I think. Cool. The they did it they did it dirty by by uh the, mentioning the West Westworld. World. Yeah, yeah. They shouldn't have mentioned Hardest Westworld. Out. If I see yeah, yeah, the yeah. word Westworld, I'm going it's the not, other way. It's not too much like Westworld. Okay, okay. I mean, like it has some of the same like cinematic sensibilities sometimes, especially in one of the time periods. But like, no, like the main characters are from like. I don't know where South Dakota maybe. Okay. Like at army vets like or marines maybe. I just finished a ton of shows. My deck has been cleared mostly. I still got Midnight Give Club. Peripheral a shot. Midnight Club is like it's an investment, you know, yeah. 10 hour long episodes. It's a lot. Peripheral's like got four. bonds, dude. Friend groups. Cool. Literal cuz like, here's almost over. haptic bonds. Sick. I think Some you'll really dig vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I want to. I want to hear what Huber thinks of the peripheral. Now is a good time for me to d- potentially watch it. Also, so. we gotta we gotta finish Patriot because it's like the greatest thing ever, and you're gonna love it. Also, very political. Patriot. Oh my god, very it fits the, it fits this perfectly. It does. Patriot is so good. Oh Great. my god, it is. Patriot is my favorite political thing. Hell yeah. Not the Patriot. Patriot. Amazon's Patriot. Nice. <laughs> starring Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> Not starring Mel Gibson. Starring Locke from John, Lost. John Locke. Terry O'Quinn. Love John Locke. He's not really the star, but he's a main character. Don't tell me what I can't do. Don't tell me what I can't do, Huber. <laughs> Simon Wallace, the original British House of Cards is an excellent political show, far superior to the bloated USA version. Only 12 episodes were ever made, but they were all great, especially Everything the first is an two adaptation, seasons. even if you don't know it. Had yeah, no I didn't idea. even know that. Hilarious. That's crazy. Hilarious. It's also Everything. more fun and less dour than the USA version while still telling a pretty dark story. I strongly recommend it to anyone even passing interest with an even passing interest in political shows. That's like, what's the other one with Peter Capaldi? Frick. Um, they swear a lot, but I don't remember what the show is called, but I've heard it's really good. I haven't seen it, but it's kind of like that. Uh, live chat, if you know what I'm talking about, tell me what, uh, Sage Mode Q. All my favorite political things are comedy. Dr. Strangelove, Borat, Head of State. Dr. Strangelove love. I love it. I love Dr. Strangelove. Anytime we can talk about Kubrick, I'm down. But the thing I really want to shout out, shout out is not a movie. It's Jordan Klepper from The Daily Show. I'm sure you've heard of him or seen his YouTube videos. 
He goes to Trump rallies and talks uh, to people and makes them, oh, yeah, it makes them look like idiots. It's hilarious, but also scary because these people are serious. They actually believe all this crazy BS and are so blind that they don't even realize they are being made fun of. Also, screw Kevin Spacey because I really loved House of Cards, but now it's tainted. Yeah, I'll never watch yeah. that show. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> never going to. Yeah. I watched like a f- uh, Before that happened, I'd watched a few episodes and I was like, yeah, all right, I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, shout out to um, Last Week Tonight with What's His Face? John, John Oliver. Oliver. I really like that Oliver's show. The goat. I really like that show Love a lot. John Oliver. Um, that show is, it, it does a really good job of being. Smart while also Smart digestible and funny to the normal and digestible. Yeah. yeah. Like I learn so much. Yeah. And it seems fair and like thought out and balanced, but I don't know. Um Tokyo Slam patron saint of reaction shots says twelve angry men. My sister was asking if Tokyo Slim was still a patron. She was like, Tokyo Slim's still around, right? And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. And she's like, Okay, we're fine. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Um Tokyo Slip says, 12 Angry Men is political in that it deals with challenging your morals, beliefs, and preconceptions about how the world works and what justice is. Fuck yeah. I still haven't seen 12 Angry Men, and I really, really oh, want to. My, but so my good. dad always recommended, uh, I think it's Russian. I don't actually remember country of origin on this, but there's a movie called 12 that's basically like the same story. Um, hmm, I didn't know that. And he said it like takes it in a different way. Shit. Um, which was very cool. Damn. Uh, It also happens to be one of the greatest movies ever made. I get that there are sometimes a resistance to watch quote-unquote old movies, but I promise you that this film is as current and relevant today as it was in 1957. Stuff like Election, Mean Girls, or Dr. Strangelove all offer different flavors of political satire, and I think they hold up to... uh, Zach Warzner loves the 12 Angry Men remake as well, directed by William Friedkin and boasting an all-star cast headlined by the downright incredible George C. Scott. That sounds great. I love George C. Scott, too. It's so Um, it's a long one. Uh, Colin Luton, sorry in advance for the length of this comment. It's one entire screen long. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. <clears throat> this prompt has come at a perfect time because I am currently obsessed with a new show on Amazon Prime called Cayman Rider Black Sun, and I need, which I think I mispronounced last time, and I don't know how or why I mispronounced. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, and I need to talk about it. This show is expressly, unambiguously, unambiguously anti-government, anti-police, anti-military, and is per- perhaps the only mainstream piece of truly capital A anarchist media I've ever seen. It is also a show where bug monsters rip each other apart in gory displays of unflinching brutality. <laughs> if you don't know, Cayman Rider is a long-running tokusatsu tokusatsu superhero series from japan about a guy in a bug mask who rides okay that's what i thought Mm -hmm. who rides around on a motorcycle and kicks nazis so hard they explode that sounds great black sun is a gritty hard r reimagining of a season from the 80s called cayman rider black it's about two best friends who belong to an oppressed race of monster hybrid people called the kaijin (laughs) the show traces the two lives as part of a Black Panthers-esque civil rights group in the 70s and the ways their ideological or ideologies evolve and fracture as backs are stabbed and lines are drawn and concessions of, to their human rights are made. Though until the modern day where the two are bitter rivals on opposite sides of a bloody revolution. Reminds me of RRR. Yeah. <laughs> That's political. That's very political. Count it. I don't understand all of the politics involved yeah. in RRR, but I loved every second of it. Yeah. Uh, here, you keep reading. I need to take a drink of water. Hard R. The show traces the two lives as part of a... Uh, the show is a furious condemnation of the imperialistic ideals... I'll just keep going. Imperialistic ideals of the modern, modern Japanese, Japanese government system and hate groups that embolden... They embolden to commit violence against foreigners and minorities. One of the main villains of the show is the Prime Minister of Japan, who is not even remotely subtle character, a former PM Shizono Abe, who you may note in Obviously. real life was assassinated earlier this year. And yeah. no spoilers, but Black Sun basically makes a straight to camera, full chested endorsement of political violence as a tool of liberation. Oh my God. <laughs> Honestly, the opinions. Director Kazuya Shirashi promotes by the end are so radical that I'm not sure I can get 100% behind all of it, but I respect him for even daring to go where he goes in a major market superhero monster show, and good goddamn is it something to behold, Kamen Rider Black Sun 
one season, 10 episode. The effects are cheesy, but they're the last thing you'll be thinking about. Fucking watch it. <laughs> Sounds what an endorsement. <laughs> Wild. Sounds cool, though. Um, TJ Price Black Hawk Down it's has a, a great ten. mix of action, yeah, action ten, suspense really combined with thought-provoking sequences of political red tape yeah. hampering the mission. Plus, it's got Obi-Wan, Legolas, Jamie everybody. Lannister, Lucius Malfoy, and Bane all in the same film. Yeah, it does. Wow, that cast is everyone. nuts. There's others you forgot, too. Like I can't even think of it right now. There's others. There's more. There's more than that. But in terms of <laughs> films that primarily deal with the government and politics, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington is absolutely incredible. It really shaped a lot of my understanding of the Senate and still holds up brilliantly despite the fact that it was released, released 83 years Fuck ago. Yeah, that's a 10, dude. Jimmy Stewart for life. Yeah, I think I watched that one in college. It's been a minute. Whoa! The computer wants to update. <gasps> Uh, Casey 83, 87. I'm very tired and hungry. Uh, 13 Days from 2000 is a really Peter good. Yeah, that's a good one. At the Cuba crisis and the ways communication was attempted. Miguel, Diplomacy 2014. Fanciful retelling of a Swedish diplomat's meeting with a Nazi governor during World War II. The diplomat's job is to convince the governor to betray Hitler's orders to b- destroy Paris. Though you know how it ends, the journey is interesting. The movie asks thoughtful questions about obeying patriotic duties at all costs. VGNT in the live chat also mentioned Downfall as one of the most gut-wrenching films I've ever seen. I don't think I've seen that one. It's Hitler in his bunker. Oh, I've seen the memes from that, I think. Yeah. Where he's like, nine, 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 nine. Yeah, yeah. About about all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that movie is an experience. Good heavens. Uh... Jesse Blue, the ones that had... I'm surprised Jojo Rabbit hasn't come up yet. That was pretty political. Weird little movie. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Blue, the ones that had the biggest impression on me were Wag the Dog, yeah, with Dustin Hoffman, Robert De Niro, and Heche, Woody Harrelson, and Co., and Disgruntled, Distinguished Gentlemen starring Eddie Murphy. They showed just how much dirty shenanigans there are behind the scenes in politics that most people never know about. Um... I know I've seen Wag the Dog, but it's been like a billion years Same, I don't really remember yeah. it. I was just thinking of Dog Day Afternoon, which I know is yep. very different. Yep. <laughs> See you when I get there. Yo, no one's brought up Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Political very, thriller. Very political thriller. Yeah. Born Identity. Shout Kinda. out. Kinda. I like spy movies. I don't Same. know. We've done a spy episode. Same. Um, Dude, we're going to have to get Remember when so MC movies were like actually yeah. a 10 out of 10 yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, actually yeah. a 10 yeah winter soldier is really good yeah wow uh listen phase five maybe will be good yeah you can't you can't be on top forever you know? yeah you and also like you did lest we you forget it took 23 movies to get to end game or whatever it was <laughs> yeah honestly i think we will appreciate the anime filler arc that has been phase four when phase five maybe is even worse <laughs> 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 Uh, see you when I get there I love investigative journalism films that move into political intrigue I was wondering if something like Spotlight counts as a political movie or as a scandal in its own I think so. genre beep boop yeah I think I think I would count yeah I would count that I would count runaway jury I would count doubt I would count yeah 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 Spotlight is very good yeah um very good I like Rachel McAdams she's lot. fantastic in that always yeah. always Fa- like legit my favorite part of the new Doctor Strange everyone's all mm, freaking out mm-hmm, about cameos mm-hmm. and bullshit it's like nah I loved their performance nah. in the new one it, yeah their little their little storyline was, was maybe my, my favorite, favorite part. part of the yeah. second movie yeah yeah um yeah when they like are talking in that like weird realm love it it's a great scene yep one of the better scenes in the movie love it and it's just talking yep. feelings baby feelings are the best Conrad my favorite movie about a political event is Frost Nixon from 2008. It's Haven't about seen it since. How the British talk show host David Frost got an exclusive interview with Nixon after the Watergate scandal because the former president viewed him as a jet setting lightweight who would be easy to outmaneuver. However, Frost managed to keep his wits, turn the table, and make Nixon outright admit his wrongdoings. Nixon has planned for the interview to mark his comeback on the political scene, but in effect, it became the last nail in the coffin for it instead. I never saw this one. It was good. It's a two. It's two straight hours of Martin Sheen and Frank Langella just uh, gobbling up the scenery like it's a Christmas smorgasbord, and it's very effective retelling of one of the most legendary interviews in TV history. 
Oh, that reminds me of Good Night and Good Luck. Yeah. I really, really love that movie. For sure. Love that movie. Um, I should also add that at the time it came out, I was a freshly graduated journalist working my first proper job, and it was very inspiring to see how you can get great results with proper preparation and interview technique. Yeah. Good double feature, that and uh, All the President's Men. I haven't seen that either. Yeah. Deep Throat, dude. Watergate. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Um, I've never seen Michael Clayton, but I'd say it counts since everything in life is political and therefore every movie is political. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to the other great political movie, Starship Troopers. Hell yeah. Yes. Fascism for sure. Alien, Labors of Critique and Capitalism. Yes. The Lion King, Monarchical Duties versus Personal Freedom and Distribution Policy. Only flaws that it still chooses the good despot trope over democracy in the end. True. Um... P.S. I just want to mention that while I fully understand that you avoid the Midnight Club because of its premise, Isla, I really think that it is a show that celebrates life and hope in the face of one's own mortality rather than wallowing in that very depressing premise. That may be true. That may be true. But like... It doesn't change the fact that yeah. the people are still gone. And right. Anytime everyone is just like, oh, well, you know, celebrate the memory. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the person is still fucking gone. Like, right. yeah. I mean, like, and also, I'm so worried about my own mortality, and I'm so afraid of illness and a slow death mm -hmm. that, like, even just, like, people talking about cancer makes yeah. me, like, really uncomfortable. Yes. Um, so I just don't need to wallow in it, personally. Yeah, like, sure. I get, and, like, also, like, I assumed that was what it was going to be about because otherwise, yeah. like, Fuck, Other, uh, fuck you for making it. Yeah, why, why? Why'd you make this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, and and most of his stuff, that is the point where it's like we're finding the hope in grief. We're mm -hmm. finding the hope in uh, dealing with zealotous belief systems. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So I assumed that that's what this show would get around to. I'm just like, I don't, I can't. <laughs> yeah, can't walk down. That <laughs> I just <road>. can't. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure it's great. Sure. Um. Yeah. Love and Respect from Sweden now run by right-wing populists in cahoots with a party co-founded by a real former SS Nazi. Don't forget to vote, people, or you'll get as fucked as we will be for the next four years. K-Rad. Yeah, I've heard things are uh, going a little weird. Network. Zach Wojnar. Uh, they're all political, all of them. For the sake of brevity, Billy Jack, Lions for Lambs, First Blood, Ace in the Hole, The King's Man, Network. Lions for Lambs, I am the not China into. Syndrome. I did not like that movie one iota. I never saw it. Not one bit. Maybe um, I need to rewatch it. All those shoutouts having been shouted out, though, I must always tip my hat cap to Star Trek five the undiscovered no six six the undiscovered country which effortlessly balances its political cold war allegory with the shakespearean gravitas of william shatner and christopher Plummer delivering oscar worthy performances at each other nothing beats Plummer's declaration that you have not experienced shakespeare until you have read him in f in the original klingon even at the precipice of peace uh there are some who won't let go of their imperial aspirations and their willingness to kill countless innocents and destabilize the entire world for all for the sake of pride is a terrifying fact of today's global political landscape almost as terrifying as the american republicans who support such russian endeavors not to get political or anything uh anything you'd el else you'd like to talk about shout out to violent night it's exactly as delightful as you want it to be hell yeah with delicious r-rated action and sincere holiday messaging i got to see it early because i'm hot shit and wanted to share dude i am stoked as hell for violent night do you know what this is is it's, it the john woo one uh no it's um it's the new upcoming holiday movie where um harper uh uh what's his name god damn it the guy from stranger things and uh chief jim hopper yeah hopper yeah, yeah, yeah. uh whose na real name i can't remember right now I for know, some I'm reason freaking out. um he's santa what claus and he's real awesome. and this family i guess from the trailer like a family who's on the nice list is being held hostage in their home by a, a team of mercenaries and thieves trying to break into their Phenomenal safe. Phenomenal premise. And, and they're on the naughty list. And so Santa shows up because it's Christmas Eve. So good. 
and then he just kills them all Holy <laughs> or shit. whatever uh, to protect this family and the little girl and stuff. It sounds awesome. That sounds it really looks good. so good. That sounds really and like good. the quips in the trailer are so funny. Like he's so David Har- Harbor. Harbor. Yeah, there it I is. Got it. it came to me. Yeah. He's so perfect. Yeah. I'm jazzed. That, for that sounds movie. really yeah, good. I'm really excited. I'm very happy that Zach Wojnar liked it because that means a lot. Nice. Mr. Manitou to go. Mr. Manatee, ma- mata- Matate. Mr. Matate. For Damiani. Best show, West Wing. Yeah. The AV Club correctly describes this show as a slapstick comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my friend A.A. A. Dowd would have said something like that. He worked there. Uh, but the subject matter in the episodes well is written. handled soberly and with heavy idealism toward the call to civic duty <sighs> and statementship. That yeah, is that's a hell of a sentence. Really well written. It's more dated, uh, more dated now in a post. I wish Trump America, but what it loosely, uh, what it loses in relevance, it gains in cathartic charm. Yo, I love your writing. Yeah, you're a great writer. I love you. <laughs> wow, you're all great writers. Yeah, but that, but that was good. That is, ooh. thank you, uh, Koshimitsu, The Wire. After the first season with McNulty, Omar, Avon, Barksdale. Don't for spoilers here. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Careful, careful. I haven't seen this show. Careful here. Huber's vetting the comment for us here. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> you, you go. I'm, I'm ahead of you a little bit. All right. Uh, and so many other amazing cops, drug dealers, and gangsters. If someone had told me that what followed would be a crime drama where each season focused on a different aspect of Baltimore civic society, the school system, government and bureaucracy, the newspaper, etc., I don't know if I would have stuck with it. But the portrayal of these various areas along with the cast was captivating all throughout until the very end. The show goes into extreme detail and introduces an insane number of characters represent are respecting the attention span and intelligence of its audience and has such good payoffs each season. Shout out to Wallace, played by a mm-hmm. young Michael B. Jordan, and Thomas Tommy Carsetti, played by mm-hmm. Littlefinger Aiden Gillen. Also, the theme song is Tom Waits, nice. but they change it every season, nice. if I'm not mistaken. The Wire is an easy 10, and it is incapable of being a parasite situation. It is, it yeah. is always... My thing with The Wire oh. was I've, I've heard forever and I believe that yeah. it's like one of the best shows of all time. It truly is. But it's like a Citizen Kane kind of a thing where it's like because every show after The Wire started doing The Wire, sure. watching the first season of The Wire, I was like, sure. wow, okay, this is aged. But I'm sure it's still incredible it's and I just so need to good. watch it. It's so good. Um... That's it. Those are all the comments. Thank you so much to our patrons in that tier, $7 nice. and up every tier. Thank you so much to our $20 and up patrons behind the scenes. Um, we've been changing that around a little bit. The main podcast is live on Twitch always now, but this podcast and a few others are still going to the behind the scenes page and we're, or tier, and we're changing that up a lot. We really need and love your respect or your support on uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash easy allies. If you are watching on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe, ring the bell, all that. It really it. helps the channel. Um, tell your friends. Do if it. you're listening to this as an audio thing, please rate us in your audio podcast host of choice. Do that it. also helps the show. Do it. Uh, try to spread the show. I really love doing this show. Same. Um, we're it. not going to stop doing this show. This isn't like a threat or I'm not, you know, whatever. But it'd be nice if more people just got Is this to our lowest viewed us. show? Reaction shots? Allies? Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. It's unfortunate. Isn't that all? I don't, I don't, I haven't looked at the audio numbers in a while. They might be higher. Okay. But it's, it's a very favorite. dedicated uh like that's what i really like about this is like it feels like like i get to yeah. know all the people in yeah. that tier and like the people that are watching right now and yeah. like everybody and like matthew walden and everybody like it's the best i just i really love it it's my fave yeah and obviously movies are my passion like, like melinda may says in agents of shield directly towards the audience mm-hmm. she's basically talking to the audience she's like we have a small but dedicated following yeah 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 <laughs> that was like when when <laughs> they were i see you that was like when they were going to cancel Arrested Development. Yeah. And like, they were like, well, maybe it's HBO, the Home Buyers Organization. <laughs> or, well, then I guess it's Showtime. Like, we'll just, like, they were just making actual yeah. jokes about the show getting canceled and moved to another network. That's funny. Um, 
yeah i don't know check it out <laughs> check out the show you just listened to mm-hmm. tell your friends um any other political and- movies on the horizon Oh, I don't know. Yeah, no, not really. Also, I'd welcome, like, do you like the format of this show? I think, like, initially, this show was like a damn college course and nobody liked it. And so I got a lot more loosey-goosey and we started just doing kind of the comments thing, mm-hmm. which I really enjoy. I yeah. like hearing from all of you. Same. And I like structuring the show that way. Same. Um, and for me, up. it's fun to hear things that I don't know about from from the watchers, from the viewers, uh, and then like I get to bounce off that with my knowledge. Mm-hmm. I guess it's kind of a backwards thing where it's like kind of, kind of the, the, the patrons do the prep work on this podcast instead of me. Yeah, um, there you go. As opposed to like the main podcast where blood like gets all these stories and stuff, but I think it's kind of fun. I don't know. But if, if you have we any haven't ideas, had a guest let in me a while, know. I feel like. We haven't had a guest in a while. The monitors behind us have just restarted because, yeah. <laughs> because of windows update. Windows update is a scourge on the earth. It's, it's been unhinged today. It's it's been nuts. We've had three computers update themselves they without are, permission. They are brute forcing their way into yeah. people's. Yeah, th- and my like, phone just updated itself, yeah. and like things don't work now. It's been like crashing and stuff. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> What's happening? Is Y two K finally happening? Is this it? <laughs> Is this what it's like? Um, we have on our one of our higher tiers in Patreon is the shout out tier, and we shout out those people. Jabba Wobs, El Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight, Kettering, and Anna Croth. Shout out. Shout out. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. We will see you again next month, probably for holiday movies. Holiday. It's the holidays. Just can't see the line, can you, Russ? What? <laughs> holiday movie. Stew on that until next holiday month. Holiday movie. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye.